Hey witches, it's Jamie back with another video for you. You know, we created this channel just so we could give you so much information and resources to help you grow your practice, to choose what's right for you, and send you on a path that you feel confident and comfortable with. I hope this video helps. The first thing that I want to address today is this crazy rumor that I heard when I finally really did step out into the witch community. I practiced for probably 15 years before I really stepped out and started trying to meet other witches. So when I really did get out there and start reading blogs or seeing what other witches have been doing, and these are witches that have been practicing for a long time, this rumor came up that really pissed me off. It, it made me feel angry that somebody would put such a rumor in place to stop other people from choosing their path or from doing the things that they want to do. And that rumor is that you have to be gifted your first tarot deck. What? Why? Why would this ever come into existence? Why would somebody decide that that is a thing? I don't know where this rumor originated, but my speculation is that back in the day, so this was 1800s and very early 1900s, but these groups, secret societies, you had to get in in a certain way. So there's this, uh, there's this barrier to entry, if you will, when these groups got started, that only the chosen or only the ones who showed a gift would be invited into these groups. And then they had to prove themselves over and over and over again. So I could see where maybe somebody decided you shouldn't practice tarot unless somebody gives you a deck because then what? It's a sign, an omen, it's the way it's supposed to be. Cut all of that out, fast forward to today. As a solitary witch, I do exactly what I want to do, when I want to do it, and how I want to do it. I get references from other places. I definitely try to find the history of things and build my practice off of what was done, what has been done, but always choosing what's right for me. So that first rumor just really, <laughs> I thought, and this is why I didn't want to be exposed to religion because religion was all about rules and you couldn't move forward until somebody else told you you were ready. You didn't get to decide you were ready. And so this rumor about being gifted your first tarot card feels like that to me, that it was a barrier for entry on helping people get started on their spiritual path or using a tool. The whole goal is to get a deck that helps you embrace your power, your confidence, your comfortableness, how comfortable you are with them. So that's the first thing that can hurt your growth. Hearing this rumor that somebody else must buy you your first deck, it just simply isn't true. So here's another myth that is, you know, maybe it's true, maybe it's not. It's really a personal uh, preference on whether or not you touch other people's cards or you let other people touch your cards, how people handle them. Now that is, it's not necessarily a myth, it is people's personal preference. It's not a hard and fast rule. Uh, when I do tarot, I absolutely have other people shuffle the cards and I think of it as them putting their energy on it and while they're doing that, I'm thinking of them putting their energy on it. So it really helps me to focus, call in my team of light, which we'll cover in another video. That's my communication tool and how I see my ritual of when I read going. That's what I do. Just make sure that it feels right for you. Don't do it just because you saw somebody else do it. Do it because it does feel natural and good for you. And if it doesn't, if you've only seen a couple ways to read and none of them feel right for you, keep exploring. There's tons of information out there for you to find. So if you do think that you shouldn't touch other people's cards or other people shouldn't touch your cards, Dig into that a little bit and ask yourself why. Do you think that something bad is going to happen? Is there, do you really believe that there's a negative energy transfer that could happen? Um, and that's just about building your core beliefs on your practice so that you are able to do a ritual that feels good for you, that you know why you do it. Again, this is just not following somebody's advice. Like, don't just follow my advice. Try it, and if it doesn't fit for you, let it go. But it's, a, it's an exploration as to how you fit well with your cards. Remember, the tool is not the thing that holds the power, you hold the power. So lastly, I think the, the big one that I hear a lot now is um, that cards need to choose you or that you need to have some kind of energetic signal between you and the cards to be like, these are my cards, I just know they're mine, I just feel it. Okay, and hey, no judgment. But when we say things like that to people who are brand new and a little more intimidated, again, it puts up this barrier before people choose their cards because now they think, I'm waiting for that sign. I'm waiting for, you know, A, B, C, D to happen. There's got to be this, oh my gosh, big coincidence around buying a card deck. 
I think it's perfectly acceptable that you like the card deck especially the art that goes into it, research it a little bit, find out about the artist. Maybe your guys' core beliefs are sort of the same, you know, uh, they're humanitarian, they own dogs, they live in California, whatever it is. When you find that connection, that can be meaningful enough. There's not something that needs to be bigger than that. It just needs to feel right for you. And I know I'm gonna keep saying that because one of the hardest parts of getting into witchcraft, be it tarot or palmistry or spells is knowing what's right for you and you don't know what's right for you until you try it i know there's nobody out there telling you that it's okay but i'm going to tell you it's okay if it doesn't work out for you if you buy a card deck that you feel absolutely aligns with you and then you get it and you realize that oh not so much so i'm going to show you a couple of things because when you're picking card decks again this is all about myths that stop you from picking decks but i'm going to show you three decks that are very different. This is a mini. This is the mini pack by The Wild Unknown and I absolutely love it because it's a travel pack and I do travel and so to be able to do a card a day and not carry a huge hunk of cards with me is perfect. The regular tarot card size is about this size and it can vary slightly but this is just the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck. This is a card that most people are used to seeing, like this size. It's a little bit bigger than regular playing cards. The Enchanted Tarot, which is a beautiful deck, but look at how big the, oh, <laughs> compared to the other two. Okay, so it's very hard to maybe do that. But these are the card sizes. And so depending on what kind of shuffler you are or what you feel comfortable with, the card size matters and you won't know unless you go to the store or like I said, fine tooth comb through the description online if you're buying them from online. So that's one thing to know is the card size. But then what kind of book does it come with? Every tarot deck that I know of comes with a description book and it's either that the artist wrote for the cards, it's a reproduction of the Rider Waite Smith, um, it's a creation of another author, but the books all differ as well. And this is probably, for me, in my opinion, the more important part of it. My two things that help me decide are artwork. I need to feel connected to the artwork. I need to know that there's messages in there for me. I love the wild unknown because of the artwork, the, the pencils, the color that goes into it, and then the fact that it's all animals. That just really resonates with me. And so far, I've been using that deck for four years and absolutely love it. But before that, you guys, I really just use the Rider Waite Tarot because I've known it for so long and it was easy. Once you've done something for 15 years, I didn't desire to go out there and get another deck. I didn't have a use for another deck. And all of the ones that come out that are bigger and heavier, so something like this, I just kind of didn't want to have to learn all of that <laughs> again. Um, but a lot of times they do coincide. So we're gonna read three descriptions for the nine of pinnacles for the each each of the three decks that I showed you. So this one is Rider Waite Smith Tarot and the nine of pinnacles says prudence, safety, success, accomplishment, discernment. Does that resonate with you? Does a description like that resonate with you? There's a lot of words, not a lot of explanation. The Enchanted Tarot card, so this is also the Nine of Pentacles in that deck, and we're flipping through a much bigger book for that. Nine of Pentacles. So the Nine of Pentacles for this is an actual page, a description of a lot of stuff because the artist created, created their artwork probably based off the Rider Waite Smith Tarot, but adding their own flair to it. So there's a message part, so there's this here there's a quick read part then there this says like messages then there's the enchantment the awakening the dream so there's way more to it and this gets into either helping you to interpret the card later through memory or giving you a lot of information so that you can decide for yourself what that card really means for you all right so lastly the deck that I currently use, even though I don't use the mini, I really use the regular deck. I take this with me when I travel, which has the teeniest, tiny, cutest mini book. Adorable. Um, so the Nine of Pentacles, she has healthy, happy home. That's very different than what we heard from Rider Waite. All right, Rider Waite said, prudence, safety, success, accomplishment. I don't see anything in there that shows those two cards meaning the same thing at all. I mean, this is where your own 
evaluation skills of how you want to be able to read a card and what the description should look like for you come into play. So that is three myths that will stop or slow your growth. You do not have to wait for somebody to gift you a deck. You can absolutely let other people touch your cards. Ask them if you're allowed to touch theirs because it is a preference. And the third one being that waiting for a card deck to choose you and have this energetic, meaningful experience with a deck that you're not holding, seeing, or having an experience with, it's a barrier for you to not get started. So that's a barrier of entry. And we just don't need it. You can pick up a deck, borrow a deck, touch anything, and there's not really a rule that says you can't. It is purely preference. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. So as this is a video that explains the barrier to get into reading tarot for yourself or for others. You may want to know more about tarot and I have a great video to suggest for you. I'll put that video here so that you can watch it after this one. I hope this helps and you guys have a wonderful week and I will see you next time.